uh, two rooms upstairs, two rooms downstairs, and her family were growing, so she needed a bigger house, and Elsie, that her family was getting smaller, so they swapped houses, and here we are. She moved over the road to Admiral Grove, and if you look down the street, mm -hmm. uh, two-thirds of the way down, you'll see a white fronted building. Mm -hmm. That's number 10, Admiral Grove. So that's where Ringo moved with his mum, aged four, um, but then eventually Elsie, uh, just stop there please, Elsie then took um, a, um, a man. She divorced Mr. Starkey and she married Harry Graves, a Londoner. Now Elsie used to sing around the pubs of Liverpool and I played for you Elsie's favourite artist as we were coming up the road. Anybody recognise? is that she's got to contribute to the family um, budget uh, and so she goes out and gets a job. She gets a job in a Woolworths store, a small department store, uh, and then she gets a job in a, in a pub. She actually meets a soldier named Taffy Williams and that results in a, um, a little girl being born. And the little girl was named Victoria. And the family, again, they are they are totally out of their minds with, with Julia because she has got a little boy and now she's had an illegitimate child. So they decide that Victoria should be given up for adoption. So Victoria is adopted by a family. The father of the family is a captain in the Salvation Army. And sadly, Victoria never met her stepbrother, John Lennon. Okay, tell you more about Julia in a few moments. Uh, now we're going to uh, call at George's house. This is where George was born. So two of the Beatles were born at home. Again, this is two rooms upstairs, two rooms downstairs. No bathroom, no inside toilet, an outside toilet. Um, it's a dead end street. So when we're looking at the street, the house is on the right hand side. It has a, a white door and it's number 12. And the, the residents don't mind us going down the street Hi. and taking, don't mind us going down the street and taking some photos. That chap who's just passed, um, he's a, he lives next door to what is George's house. Um, they don't mind us taking photos, but please, if there's any children about, don't take photos of children. Uh, don't peer into people's windows, um, because they're, they're very, very tolerant of what we're doing. Um, and we appreciate that, so we try to be as, um, as careful as we can. Don't drop any litter, because it's not very nice even smoking s s cigarette butts. Please don't do that. I'm sorry I have to mention these things, but in the past people have done uh, precisely that. And so we just need to be respectful. We're going into a residential area, and there's 17 houses. And George's house is number 12, with a white door on the right-hand side. Okay, this is also our only toilet stop. So if you quite require a toilet, a bathroom, that is the pub that we can use, the cock and bottle. The, uh, the owners of the pub know that we, we're using the pub, so you can go in there freely. You don't have to pay. Um, you can either go straight away or you can go after we've seen the, the house. Okay? So I'd like to... strawberry fields forever and when you're little and you're making up all sorts of adventures um, nothing is real because his favorite book at the time was Alice in Wonderland where nothing is real 
and from a certain part of the gardens you could actually see into John's back garden because Uncle George had made for him a tree house so he could see no one's up in my tree. And eventually when this is completed, which will be en the end of this summer, um, there'll be a section of the gardens which is devoted to the Beatles and John Lennon and it's going to have a live link with Strawberry Field in Central Park in New York. Okay, we'll get off the coach and take some photos. Please be careful, don't step beyond the coach on the left hand side. John died in 1980. Uh, Yoko's first return visit to Liverpool was 1984. She brought Sean. The first place she came to was Strawberry Field. And this is when it was still a children's home, because remember it didn't close till 2005, 2008. And um, they, they, they took photos just like you've taken some to Hamburg. And just before he moved out, he was living here with his uh, first wife, Cynthia, because Cynthia was with child, and um, they decided, him and Mimi, that it would be better if Cynthia moved in, because John was always out uh, on various gigs. So keep looking to your left-hand side. I'm going to show you the world where John climbed over. It's just coming up on your left. It's Vale Road. This is where... Um, Eleanor Rigby lived in Vale Road. So I'll keep looking to your left, and there's the wall, just there. The original boundary wall, sandstone wall. This building on the left wasn't here, and this building just coming up, that wasn't um, as big as it is. Um, and it's the third house along, 251 Menlo Avenue, Mendips. Uncle George died in 1955, aged 52, and then Mimi had to take in students from Liverpool University to help her with the household income. Originally she was a nurse, but she packed in nursing when, um, when John uh, joined the family household. Um, that's the house with the black and white windows. Um, 1964, so John shared this house with six students and Auntie Mimi after 1955 and there's been no changes to the house whatsoever really they're the original windows 1964 john comes back uh, from london he moves down to london 1963 finds mimi crying in the front room says what's wrong she says i'm sick to death of all these young girls wanting to see john lennon and the beatles so he says right pack your bikes i'm taking you away he took her to the south coast of england a place called pool in dorset and he bought her a bungalow uh, he spent £20,000 on the bungalow and she was furious with him. She said, John, you should not be spending so much money on me. He says, Mimi, you've looked after me all of my life, now I'm looking after you. And um, she lived in the, that house until December 1991 when she passed away. The family who moved in uh, after Mimi moved out, Mimi moved out in 1965, the family moved in, they put the house up for sale in the year 2000, 2001 and um, Yoko Ono bought this house, and she bought this house as a memorial to John, but she gave it to an organisation called the National Trust. Now the National Trust is a, a charity organisation which generally look after huge mansions, grand villas, big castles, areas of outstanding natural beauty, quite unusual for them to have a house like this. But they actually bought McCartney's house in 1996. So they've got this house and they've got uh, McCartney's house. And you can visit both houses if you book with the National Trust. They will pick you up in, the, in Liverpool, where the big wheel is, and uh, they will bring you to this house. You spend 40 minutes in this house, 40 minutes in McCartney's house, and there's a curator inside who will tell you the history of the house and the history of Lennon living in the house. It's very, very good. Um, okay, we'll move off, please. The only thing that's, that's missing, so the, they've refurbished it into the 1950s style. John's bedroom was the small room that you could see at the front. The only thing that's missing is that John used to have a full life-size picture of Bridget Bardot, because he was into Bridget Bardot and Rita Hayworth. Full life-size picture of Bridget Bardot stuck to the ceiling above his bed. But more often than not, it fell down. So he always said, every morning, he woke up with Bridget Bardot on top of him. <laughs> okay, take in this, um, this grass area over to your right-hand side. This is where the trams used to run from Penny Lane, but we ripped the trams up in the 1950s. 
and then we planted it with grass, but also a, like a privet hedge either side. Now, the privet hedge could have been partially responsible for something that happened on the 15th of July, 1958. John's mum, Julia, had come to see John. John was uh, making um, a, a great relationship with his mum. It started when, uh, when Uncle um, George died in 1955, and he realised who his mum was, and so uh, he started going round to his mum's. He was having his tea there most nights of the week. Uh, he was um, staying weekends, and what happened was that several months earlier, along this road, John Dykins, her partner, um, remember she didn't marry him, uh, he was travelling along this road, he was involved in a road traffic incident which affected uh, his, um, his licence, which affected mm. his job, which affected the family income. And so, what happened was that he said to Julia, we haven't got as much money coming in, you need to go and have a quiet word with John, tell him he can't come to the house as often as he is. Which would have, you know, shattered John really. Unfortunately, John wasn't in. Uh, so me, so uh, Julia has a cup of tea with Mimi. Um, John still doesn't arrive, so she leaves the house. She crosses over the first section of the road. She crosses over the uh, the grass area. She attempts to cross over the next section of the road, but she's hit by a car being driven by an off-duty police officer, and she was found to be dead on arrival at the local hospital. This is John's tribute to his mum. Because it was a, um, it was a more leafy suburban area than the speak, a nicer area. So for one year, uh, Paul McCartney got the same bus as uh, George Harrison to the school in the city centre, which we'll see a little bit later on in the tour. That's how they met. There wouldn't have been many kids who were going from Speak to the city centre, going to this uh, grammar school, wearing the same uniform, and so they, they obviously recognised each other in terms of the uniform. Okay, um, so they moved in in 1955, and the family were uh, overjoyed um, that they'd, they'd come to this area, um, a nice, nicer area than speak. But the joy was very short-lived because within several months of 1956, Mother Mary died of breast cancer. And so um, that was, Paul was age 14. So when he met uh, John Lennon, and then later John Lennon uh, lost his mum, obviously he had a lot in common. I'm going to play for you a section of A Day in the Life. A Day in the Life was written by uh, John Lennon, but there's a little bit by Paul McCartney, which is about his morning routine in number 20, Fourth Road. Can you turn up the... Uh, yes. It's it's the one. One. You have to pay all the time. Mm. Um, but it's not a lot of money, really. But this will get you in free. Mm. Uh, so make sure you have a ticket. Also, show this ticket at the bar as well because they'll give you a little gift. Mm. And when I say little, mm. I mean little. <laughs> uh, but also, um, opposite the cavern, and there is a little map on the back. Mm -hmm. Not that you need the map, but the map shows you the route that you would take from leaving the coach, walking around to the cavern. And when you walk down Matthew Street, the cavern is on your right-hand side. You'll see a sign saying the cavern pub. That's not the cavern. Mm. The cavern is on the right-hand side. Opposite. I'll explain all that in a few minutes' time. But opposite the cavern, there is a restaurant. Uh, the restaurant is owned by the people who own this company, and they own the cavern, mm -hmm. and they also own the restaurant. And they ask us to publicize it. Mm -hmm. But please don't think that either myself or Ian are on commission for sending you there. We're not. Um, you either go or you don't go. But if you, if, you look at, if you look at the menu, which is on the wall outside the entrance to the restaurant, um, and if you fancy something, go in, because this, this ticket will get you 15% off. Mm. So if you think it's worth it, then go in. If you don't, don't bother, okay? But we, we are not on commission, so please don't think that. Okay, um, how come uh, Brian Epstein 
became the uh, the second manager of the Beatles. Well, the Beatles. Proper old alehouse, and uh, John um, and Stuart actually did some painting in the pub. There's lots of Beatles memorabilia. Look at this building just coming up on the right hand side, uh, the brick building. This is the home of the Liverpool Philharmonic Orchestra. If you pass your degree uh, at the Liverpool Institute of Performing Arts, Paul McCartney awards you your degree by hand in July at that building. So McCartney's in the build in the in the city every July. Look to your left, and that's where Paul McCartney did the carpool karaoke with James Corden. In that room, just there on my left now. So if you're staying in Liverpool, I would make my way up to this area. It'll take you about 20 minutes to walk. In 1957, because there was an accountant named Alan Sittner. Now, Alan had gone to Paris on holiday, and he came across a jazz club on the left bank of the Seine, not too far from Notre Dame Cathedral. And it was called Le Caveau de la Houchette. In other words, the cave on Rue de la Houchette. It's still there today. It's still a jazz club. So if you're in Paris, look it up. It's the forerunner of the cavern. And what happened was that uh, Alan uh, was so impressed that he thought, let's set up a jazz club in Liverpool. 